When working in Revit, you're going to need to be constantly selecting objects and elements that you've already created in order to adjust their position or to change some of their properties. So in this unit, I'm going to show you different methods for selecting objects, either individually or as groups. So I'm going to start off with picking individual instances. And to do that, you simply hover over an object or an element with your cursor and you'll see it highlight. If you want a particular element, let's say this wall, just simply click with the left mouse button and the object is selected. Now, as soon as I click on another object, the first object is deselected and the new object becomes the current selection. And as you may expect, the properties palette changes to show you its properties. If you want to select more than one object, but do it individually, i.e. picking each one that you want, you can hold down the control key. So I'm going to hold that down now. Now, as I press the control key on my keyboard, notice the little plus sign that appears next to the cursor. This means that I'm going to add to the current selection set. So I've currently got this column selected. I'm holding the control button down on my keyboard and now while I continue to hold control I can add extra items or families to that selection set. Conversely if I hold down the shift key a little minus sign appears next to the cursor I can now remove individual items from that selection set. If you need to select a group of objects quickly, a selection fence is probably the most efficient method of doing so. Now I'm going to show you how that works now. Now there's two versions or two ways of creating a selection fence. So I'm going to start in the top left hand corner. So I'll put my cursor up here, click and hold the left mouse button and drag the cursor down towards the bottom right. Now when you start top left to bottom right, as you create a larger fence, you can see the things that are going to be selected are the items that are wholly inside the fence perimeter. So if we look up here, for example, both those windows will be selected because they're completely inside the fence. However, the wall isn't in the fence yet. It is now. So top left to bottom right, only items that are wholly inside the fence will be selected. Let go of the fence and there is your selection set. Now if I start from bottom right and work to top left, it works slightly differently. Anything that crosses the fence, either wholly inside or partly inside, gets selected. So there's two methods of using that fence tool depending on how you need to select objects. Quite often when you're working in Revit, you're going to need to select a group of items all of the same category. So for example, you may want to change all these walls to a different wall type. So rather than picking each wall individually and changing its type, you might want to select them all as a group and then you can change their type in one hit. So if we do a fence around our elements, we don't actually see the properties for the wall here. In fact, it's all gone blank. That's because we've got a number of different Revit categories all selected at the same time. We've got some doors, some windows, some window tags, treadmill. Uh, we've got some columns in there. So we need to be able to drill down and select just the walls. And that's where this filter tool comes in. So as soon as you have more than one category of object selected, so even if I just pick that area just there, so the wall and some doors, I get the filter tool. So I click on that, the filter dialog box comes up and it actually displays, lists out the categories that are currently selected. So we know we've got some door tags, some doors, and some walls. 
and it tells us how many of each instance are in that selection set. So let's go cancel that for a second and select everything again. Make sure we pick up all those walls. Hit filter again. You can see we've got a few extra categories now. And then all you need to do is uncheck the ones that you're not interested in and leave obviously the ones you are with a checkbox. Quick way of doing that is hit check none. So all the ticks go out and now we can just turn back on walls. Hit OK. And now we're left with a selection set that just consists of those instances of the walls. So now you can see the properties palette has come back into play in displaying the parameters of those four instances of walls. And now we can easily change that to something else and the wall changes accordingly. So the use of that filter tool, really handy when you're trying to drill down and change uh, similar objects all in one go. So again, we could select just the columns, filter, check none. We just want columns, knowing that we've drilled down and filtered out just the columns and we could change those accordingly. So we just saw how the filter tool can be used to change the properties of groups of similar items. We can also do that directly from the properties palette itself without the use of the filter tool. I'm just going to show you that now. So let's go ahead and select a group of items there. So again, we know that we've got various categories of items selected. So this is the area I'd like you to look at now. This little drop down box here currently says common 17. So there's 17 items or instances of objects altogether. Now, if I click the little drop down here, I've got a list of all the categories, exactly the same as we saw up in the filter tool over there. But I can now use this to filter down and drill to groups of parameters. So for example, if I want to change the windows in that selection set, switch it to windows there, it tells me I've got two selected. Notice that the selection set is still showing everything selected, but I've filtered down just in the properties palette to the parameters for the windows alone. And now I could change those to a different type, for example. Likewise, I could now swap that to walls and change the wall types. So a really efficient method of being able to drill down in the properties palette and tease out the category of item that you're interested in and then changing its parameters or type accordingly. And that completes this unit. To get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.